everybody it's dakota and today we're going to be going over a sweet modern deck that is not really going to be affected too much by the modern banning that we had earlier today and that is the dredge mechanic dredge deck in the modern format because uh this deck does some really powerful and cool things uh, and obviously the premier uh, graveyard deck at least when people talk about graveyard decks in modern dredge is like one of the first ones that gets brought up but um, before we actually dive into the deck and talk about the sweet workings of this uh, graveyard deck, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see more modern decks in the future, along with uh, Pioneer and Standard. Uh, a lot of uh, sweet decks in all the formats. I think the probably the most supported formats uh, for sure in paper and in digital. So if you want to see the sweetest decks or some of the hottest decks in those formats, make sure you subscribe right to my YouTube channel. Do it right now so you don't forget. And then uh, with that being said, we'll actually start getting into the deck. So essentially Dredge is a deck that is centered around the Dredge mechanic, which if you look at Golgori Thug, uh, as dredge four, which means if you would draw a card, instead you may put exactly four cards from the top of your library into your graveyard. If you do, return this card from your graveyard to your hand. Otherwise, draw a card. So, uh, Golgori Thug and Stinkweed Imp both have this uh, mechanic. Uh, Stinkweed Imp having dredge five, so you put five cards from your library into your graveyard to then put this card into your hand. So exactly uh, how does this help us if we're just putting cards on the top of our library into our graveyard? Well, we can mill over cards like Bloodgast, Narc Amoeba, Prized Amalgam, and Ox of Ogonas, whatever the heck you say that, uh, which has a ability called Escape, which we'll get to uh, here in a second. Um, Bloodgast, if you play land, it can come back to the battlefield under your control. Uh, it has haste as long as your opponent has 10 or less life, but it can't block as the downside. An Ark Amoeba, when it's put into your graveyard from your library, you put it on the battlefield, or you may put it on the battlefield. Uh, Prize Amalgam cares that if a creature enters the battlefield from the graveyard, it'll come back into play tapped at the beginning of the next end step. And Ox has Escape for double red and exiling eight other cards from your graveyard. And when it enters the battlefield, you discard your hand, then draw three cards. So essentially, uh, with this card, and what gives the deck a lot of velocity is that you can just mill a ton of cards with Stinkweed Imp and Golgori Thug. And then uh, eventually, you'll be able to escape an Ox to then essentially get three more dredges out of it. So you you have Stinkweed Imp and Golgori Thug in your hand, you're going to discard those cards, and then by the time you get to draw cards with the Ox Trigger, you can actually dredge those cards into your graveyard and essentially refuel back up and have a 5-3 on the battlefield, which is very hard for your opponent to deal with when Fatal Push does not kill the Ox. Um, Merchant of the Veil plays a similar role that like Ox wants to do, and that you can discard a card and then draw a card, and you can do this at instant speed, uh, as well, which means that you'll get to, uh, say, discard Golgori Thug and then dredge four immediately with the draw that the Haggle uh, Adventure half of Merchant of the Veil gives you. Um, really, like that's kind of your payoffs for the deck is to either bring back a big ox, dredge a ton of your library, um, get more prized amalgams into play, Narc Amoebas, and Bloodgast to then eventually just kill your opponent with a bunch of random two ones. And one ones that you essentially didn't have to cast at all and just had to play lands, mill yourself, and then essentially prize amalgam just being in the graveyard when these things come into play. Um, this deck is really explosive, especially if you have like a Merchant of the Veil and then you dredge like Stinkweed Imp off of the haggle half of it. And then you just get to like flip over a Narc Amoeba and a Prize Amalgam to then bring back Prize Amalgam at the end of your opponent's turn to then like maybe if you mill like a Blood Gas or something like that, you can bring it back with a, uh, with a land. Um, some other cards to really like get this deck going and uh, kind of shows like the power of this deck. Uh, even though you can put a lot of power into play super quick, you do have some spells that want you to uh, hold cards and things like that. Um, Life from the Loam is another card with Dredge that returns three cards or three land cards from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, and Conflagrate it has a flashback cost of double red and discarding X cards to deal X damage divided as you choose among any number of targets. So essentially what this deck can do is uh, with all the reach it has with uh, four creeping chills as well, if it's put in your graveyard from your library, you can exile it and essentially drain your opponent for three and you gain three. So uh, with a combination of creeping chill and the one conflagrate and uh, with some help from life of the loam, you can essentially deal all 20 points of damage without having to go to combat. 
uh, if you so choose to, because uh, Conflagrate can sometimes deal like eight, ten damage to your opponent. Uh, creeping Chill just dealing three. You know, you mill over two Creeping Chills and you Conflagrate someone for five even. You've dealt 11 damage to them total, which means you only need to do nine more points. And when you have like two Blood Gas and an Archimeba in play, that's a two-turn clock on your opponent. That's really hard for them to deal with because a lot of their creatures might just end up trading with Blood Gas. And while your Blood Gas are recursive, every time that you get them back with Land Drops, uh, especially since you're uh, dredging life from the loam, you can just keep hitting land drops to keep bringing blood gas back into play. Um, Shriekhorn is a essentially a one mana card that lets you uh, uh, dredge four from the top of your library. Uh, it comes into play with three counters. You tap it to uh, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, which then you can also do on the upkeep uh, if you're essentially looking for a dredger in your top four cards. If you don't have one in your hand or you do have one in your hand, maybe you're just like, looking for a way to uh, get another one in there. Um, and that's kind of like, the, as far as like the spells go, like this this deck is just really trying to load its graveyard up with a ton of cards. I really don't need to talk about Cathartic Reunion because it essentially does the same job that Ox and Merchant of the Veil does, but can do it on turn two consistently and can really get your dredging going uh, considering you just discard two, draw three, instead of Tormenting Voice, which was like discard one, draw two. Uh, so really you can just like dredge like 10 or 9 cards with a cathartic reunion and essentially be very likely to hit another dredger to dredge like another 4 or 5 cards. So getting to dredge 14, 13 cards on turn 2 uh, in a deck where you can just uh, spill a bunch of creatures into play and essentially accidentally put in uh, 10, 12 power. Uh, cathartic reunion is a, a great engine for the deck uh, and it can also... Uh, get you ready to have like a big conflagrate once you eventually mill it over um, The lands blast zone is just a really good utility land uh, blood crypt bloodstained mire uh, Dagmore salvage is a land with dredge that you can um, You can obviously get back if you need to make a land drop to uh, Get blood gas going if you don't have life in the loam forgotten caves uh, has cycle which you discard the card, draw a card, which essentially means that you could have like a dredge at instant speed if your opponent tries to like eat it with like a scavenging or eat your dredger with like a scavenging ooze or uh, juka bogs you or, or something like that. Like you're able to dredge back like key cards uh, from your graveyard uh, at instant speed because of Forgotten Cave. Uh, Merchant of the Veil can do the same thing, but like obviously um, Forgotten Cave being able to do it and being able to pick up from Life in the Loam is just a little bit better than Merchant. Uh, Gemstone Mine is essentially a land that taps for any color, which you're essentially playing like uh, a four color deck, like splashing the green. Your Greeks is splashing green from Life of the Loam. Uh, this card just lets you cast them and then it goes into your graveyard and then you can just pick it back up with uh, Life of the Loam if you need to. Uh, some basic mountains, uh, so you can get some untapped lands with uh, Scalding Tarn, Bloodstained Mire, and Wooded Foothills, and Stomping Ground, because again, you do need uh, uh, green mana some of the time. Uh, and then like uh, Blood Crypt obviously casts like the majority of your spells. You're not really casting an Archimeba or Prized Amalgam either. It can come up uh, that you can do it with like Gemstone Mine, but uh, a lot of the time you're just like black, red, splash up and green. Maybe you're not really Grixis, but you have enough cards in there to like consider your Grixis. So that's the main deck. The sideboard, uh, another Conflagrate, because this card's great. Uh, I think they used to play two, but now that you probably only need just one in the main, one in the side is fine. Dark Blast is a neat card because it also has Dredge and it gives a creature minus one, minus one. And there is tricks with this where you can essentially make this like a two mana uh, disfigure by just doing it on your upkeep to give a creature minus one, minus one, dredging it. Uh, instead of drawing for your turn and then dark blasting their thing again to kill it also really good in the mirrors against like blood gas and archimibas uh, lightning axe uh, you can pay a red and then discard a card or you can pay the extra five if you really want to uh, most of the time you're not since we would like to discard some more dredgers and just deals i'll write five to a creature which is really good in our deck uh considering that again we want dredgers in the graveyard there's just certain cards that we don't want in our hand uh, and just uh, trading this and then a card to get rid of a major threat that's probably roadblocking our creatures is pretty good. Uh, Nature's Claim to get rid of uh, Leyline of the Voids and other like rest in peace type effects. Uh, and giving them four life really doesn't matter because we're just dealing big chunks of damage to our opponent with all these small creatures. 
Um, Ancient Grudge is artifact hate that we can uh, dredge over and still be able to use. Obviously, it's pretty bad when uh, they have like uh, Leyline of the Void and things like that, but if they have Leyline of the Void and whatever, we just uh, bring in Nature's Claim instead of the Ancient Grudges. Uh, Shenanigans is a dredgeable artifact hate card, which is pretty good considering that like just milling one card to get this card back. Obviously, you would want it to dredge more, but the fact it's repeatable uh, artifact destruction with uh, Demir Warza and things like that running around, this card's great. Uh, Magus of the Moon is basically the is the creature version of Blood Moon. Um, honestly, 100, not 100% sure what the creature version is against the... Uh, Against the enchantment version of it, but, um, cause it, I mean, it still just dies to like blast zone and things like that. But like, um, this is probably a lot harder for like Titan decks to deal with than regular blood moon. So you have Magus in here more than likely, um, over the enchantment counterpart. Uh, and then of course you have your only line of the voids for the mirrors, the decks that care about graveyards, things like that. You can put it in play for free and, uh, you can cast this card. And even when it's in your deck, you can discard it to like merchant of the veil and conflagrate and things like that so it's not completely dead uh if it's not in your opening hand if you draw it later you have ways to get rid of it and that is the dredge deck for modern uh sweet deck i say all these decks are sweet but you know like this this deck in particular uh plays on an axis that most decks don't really play on you know like there's big mana decks that try to utilize their lands and things like that to cast a bunch of spells super early uh there's all these control decks and then there's like these really cheap interactive decks that try to stay low to the ground and use just uh very efficient high impact cards for their mana cost and this deck uh, is actually playing some pretty underwhelming cards on their own but all synergized together so well that even some of those like very powerful strategies fail to really beat this deck because again, like um, certain plays that we were talking about earlier, where you could like Merchant of the Veil to discard a Stinkweed Imp, dredge five, and then like you could hit like easily an Arkham Beeble Prize Amalgam. You put four power into play by just doing what your deck wants to do and playing these like, again, probably pretty bad cards that all end up actually doing something uh, once you get going. Uh, and then Ox giving this deck like a lot of. Uh, a lot of fuel and just making its uh, explosive draws even more explosive and just downright nutty uh, considering that you can just dredge all your dredges to your hand, get rid of all the chaff in your graveyard, discard those dredges again, and then redredge them. You know, dredging 13, 14 cards uh, with Ox is not a very tall order for it. Um, a 5-3 is hard to deal with. Uh, it essentially plays the role of like what... Um, uh, there's like a card that's played in like mono red that's really good and i probably won't think of it till the end of this video but uh, that's like my thoughts on the deck and things like that uh really cool a lot of fun to play decently cheap if you want to get into the modern format um you're going to lose the graveyard hate uh some of the time you know you're, you're not going to always find your graveyard uh sideboard cards you're not always going to find your hate cards things like that so um Definitely with this deck, it's learning that sometimes you just lose because your opponent has an infinite amount of hate or just has a hate piece that, they, that you can't get rid of until they kill you. Um, that being said, if your opponent doesn't kill you and you're able to find your hate in a reasonable amount of time, you can just easily win those games just even as easy as you could have lost them. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for uh, Dredge for Modern. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next